Hello everyone. I hope you all are doing great. Let us start with one another very important topic related to Ansible that is Ansible variables and handlers. Now let us understand what is exactly Ansible variable and why we are using Ansible variables. So Ansible variable is very useful when suppose your code length is 1000 lines or 2000 lines or even 500 lines or 100 lines. What exactly we do? We define multiple places like the software name, the version of software, or even multiple other like port number and few other parameters. Now, suppose some uh, someday later you decided to change your port number or you decided to change your software versions. Now, as a uh, DevOps engineer, you have to go through each line of the code, replace those version parameter, uh, again with a new version of software, those port numbers, those all parameters you have to check in whole code and you have to modify it. So to make things much organized, what we exactly do? We just need to define a variable section in our playbook and that variable can be referred inside your code at any place. So in future, if you have to change those parameters, you can directly change those parameters at a single place in the variable section instead of going through whole section of code and changing that. So this is exactly variable. We will do it practically as well. The another very important topic is Ansible handlers. So what are exactly handlers? Handlers are just like other tasks in a playbook. The difference being that they are triggered using the notify directive and are only run when there is a change of state. What exactly I mean by this? So handler are also similar kind of tasks like other tasks available inside your playbook. But handler is the section of code which get triggered or which become active only when somebody is there to notify and once notify is triggered, the section of code inside the handler will be triggered. Now you have to make sure that a handler should be having a globally unique name within the whole playbook. So if my playbook is maybe thousand line of code in my playbooks, I have to make sure every time, whenever you are using handlers, you have to make its name unique inside whole of your playbook. Now, if multiple handlers are defined with the same name, then only the first one will be called, the remaining handlers will be ignored. Having multiple handlers with the same name is not a good idea and it is really useless because only first handler will be used, other handlers will be ignored. Handlers always run in the order in which they are defined in the handler section and not in the notify section. So inside the handler section, whatever the order of handlers you will be defining, it only runs on basis of that section. Suppose you are running a task and that, that task is unchanged means Suppose you want to install GitHub in your target system, but GitHub is already installed in the target system. In that case, even the notify directive is telling handler that uh, please execute the code inside your section, but handler will not run in that case. Why? Because your task is unchanged. Nothing has happened to your task, so handler will not do anything. So to maintain idem potency, we discussed about idempotency even in the last lecture that idempotency means you have to maintain the state of your system. If things are already present, it will skip it instead of making any changes to the existing state. So handler task will only run if there is change in the state, else it will not run. To define a handler, the notify and handler directives are used. The notify directive triggers the execution of task specified in the handler section. I, I, I think uh, you might get confused with this theoretical thing, but still let us wait a minute. We'll go to practical section and we'll implement each and every step practically. So now let us move to our actual coding section. So, let us try with the variable and then later we will try with handler as well. So this is a simple code for variable. 
what exactly I am trying to do, I will explain it. So as I told in the beginning, our playbook will start with triple hyphen. After that, name of your playbook, I, I'm just writing the name like example for variables. Host, which all machines you want to run. This is the section which I am adding it now first time. That is where section. Where is variable section. So you have to use the parameter where colon and then name of your variable and then you can give the actual name or any 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 anything you can put here and the actual value associated to that. And then as usual task will come and inside the task you can start writing your module. So here I am using a module that is user module. So user now name here you can specify the name directly like whatever the user you want to create in the target system and then a state is present means you have to make sure that this user is created in the target system so instead of writing this hard coded name at this place i am just calling that variable using double curly braces starting double curly braces closing and this is kept inside the quotes and inside the code the actual variable actual variable whatever the name you have defined so i have given here name so same thing i am calling here at this place suppose here you have given x then you have to call this x parameter here that x here will be called so now let us do one thing let us try to run this playbook so instead of test ansible i will put test ansible test ansible 1 2 3 now let us try to run the playbook so as I told um, in the past how to run the playbooks and see well hyphen playbook your playbook name example where dot yml hyphen i your inventory path root and then inventory file name. So let us see. So you got a message like change this one. Now let us go here and verify that your user what was the username which I have defined in this section is test ansible 123. Go to the target system. There is a file where all users are present that is etc paw. And you can see in the last test 123 was created. So this is one of the simple example of using variable inside your playbooks. Now sometimes suppose you don't like to put if you, your variable names are very big like many 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 things inside the variable section then you don't want to do that you want to keep the variable informations these variable informations inside a file no problem you can create any file here in the same location like i have created here where files you can put abc files or anything xyz name so what you have to do you have to just um, the playbook in this way so you have to again use where section but here instead of using where's you have to put where's underscore file and then the name of your variable file whatever the name you have defined and it will automatically read it and it will call those so let us see how exactly i have done here what i have defined in where's file so in where's file i have just given one name colon chintu this is one para variable name name and its value is chintu now whenever you will go here and you will you are already uh, specifying your variable file name here now whenever this variable you are calling you are again using the where syntax and there in that file you have written name and name has some value so whenever this playbook will run whenever this playbook will run that user should be created in the target system so now let us do one thing let us instead of chin2 maybe put ramesh123 and save it now run your playbook again ansible hyphen playbook your playbook name hyphen i and then path with the inventory file name so let us see now so playbook execution was successfully one change has happened now let us see the same file again so you can see ramesh123 was created in my target computer so this is one of the best example of using ansible variables
will implement these things in a big project as well but yeah first understand this concept and then slowly we'll go and implement it in the real time project as well so that's it about variables now the next part which we discussed about handlers so as i told handlers is like a normal task in our playbook but handler code will only be active when there is some notify directive which will notify the handler to work so let us see one playbook for our handlers as well so what exactly i am doing i am trying to write a playbook and what is exactly this playbook is doing i want to install apache on all our rhel or centos servers hosts is all then in the task section i am using one yum module as we already discussed in the previous lectures using yum module i am just installing a software called httpd and state is the latest means latest version of software i want to install in the target computer so this code is common which we used in the previous uh, modules as well now parallel to the module like here i am using yum module so same parallel to the module i am writing a keyword called notify colon so what exactly i am doing once this playbook this section of code will be running there is a notify directive same parallel to your module name in the notify section you can put any name like here once after execution of this section of code i am notifying and i am telling giving a name like start apache here you can give any name like start xyz or start name is your choice you can give anything you can just leave it like normal start also or you can leave the name like run you can any name any name is fine now same parallel to your task handler is i as i told in our, our theoretical discussion that handler is also similar like a task so same parallel to task you will write handlers so handlers keyword which is same like task that's why i am writing it parallel to the task now same inside the handler you have to make sure that you are giving the name of your handler and what should be the name of handler name of handler should be the same name which you are writing inside the notify section so here i have written start apache so handler name should also be start apache if here i could have written run here handler name should also come run now the name is mandatory and it should be matching to the notify section name now what i am using i am using service module service module i am telling name and name of the service is sttpd which i have installed in the now the next thing i am telling that is start it make it sure that this service is started so what exactly this code will do it will first install the httpd software in our system once the installation is completed it will notify and notify name is given and then handler will capture that notify name and if it is matching it will run its own block of code that is restarting of or starting of httpd service so i hope this is now quite clear why exactly handlers are used suppose in your system you are installing database or you are changing next level kernel parameters now what you want to do once those parameters are modified what you want to do you want to restart few of the services in your system so once that section of module is executed successfully then you can call your handler task and it can do the next step of action so it is something like if in a team there are three engineers the first engineer is completing his or her assigned task then that person has to inform the second person that i have done my task now you can do your task so first person is the notify one and second person is like the handler like once the previous task is done handler is taking his or her defined actions so now let us run this playbook so how to run ansible hyphen playbook your playbook name then hyphen i slash root 
slash whatever the inventory file name. So let us see what happens. It is now trying to install the latest version of Apache. So you can see installation is done and then restarting also done. Let us verify here. So HTTPD service should be restarted. The installation. So how to check that HTTPD was installed or not? You can use your use this command like rpm-qa grep and your software name sttpd so you can see sttpd is installed now you have to check sttpd service was really started or not you can check system ctl so system ctl status sttpd so you can see it is active and running 39 seconds ago this was exactly the handler uses i hope now you can easily understand what is handler and what are ansible variables and what are its real time uses stay tuned for more videos thank you so much guys for giving your valuable time have a great day ahead thank you